Here's Victoria and Anthony with an AMI This Week Shortcut. And now speaking of rest and relaxation, Victoria, for many, including myself, a glass of wine is one of life's little pleasures. Uh, well, for a connoisseur like you, you'll enjoy this next segment. It's the latest installment of our Wine 101 series. That's right. And once again, Halifax presenter Laura Bain gets a hands-on wine tutorial with sommelier Heather Rankin, co-owner of Obladi Wine Bar. And this time, it's a crash course in red. We're back here today at the bar uh, with Heather at Obladi, and uh, we're going to try some reds today. So Heather, what do you have here for me to try? So the first red is a, a wine made with the Gamay grape. So Gamay is coming back into fashion for any wine fashionistas out there. I feel like I've heard of it, but I don't really know what it's all about. Yeah, so it's kind of like the cowboy cousin to Pinot Noir. It's, okay. uh, it's grown in the Beaujolais, which is in the, to the south of Burgundy. Okay, so I know from our uh, previous lesson on white, the first thing I'm going to do is give it a little swirl sure. in the glass and then a sniff. Mm -hmm. Don't really know what I'm smelling there. So a good place to start, I suppose, would be the fruit. And uh, for Gamay and a lot of other light-bodied reds, we're more in kind of red berry territory. So okay. maybe um, red cherry or darker black cherry, um, those kinds of notes. It also, lighter-bodied reds tend to present more of the herbaceous and floral side of wine. Mm. So we're getting a lot of, you know, uh, lighter uh, violets, um, we're getting uh, dried herb, things like, you know, maybe oregano, those kinds of things. All right, let's give it a taste. Sure. I can definitely taste the cherry in that. Mm. And again, you're spitting your wine today into, a, is it called a spittoon? Sure. Okay, yeah. into a spittoon because you do this all day long and mm. you've got to stay steady on your feet. Right. Um, yeah, but I think, yeah, I can taste some cherry on that. It's cherry, um, and there's the texture too. I mean, the, what you may have noticed too, there's great acidity in um, lighter bodied reds, particularly mm -hmm. from uh, places like Beaujolais and from the Gamay grape. So lots of energy and lift. Uh, right, that's is, that feeling I'm really feeling in my cheeks, that puckery right, kind of feeling. Exactly. It's a nice place to start the evening too. A lot mm. of people like bold, bold and, and, large, and big bodied reds, but if you're starting the evening out, you might want to start somewhere here with a light bodied red and it gives you space to move from there. And what's the second wine that you have here for second us? second wine we have is a kind of a cool, interesting uh, grape called Faga. Again, another one I have not heard of before, yeah. Baga. It's not that common. I, I don't know of many other Bagas in the region or in the province. This one is made by a really small producer in an area of Portugal called Barreira. Uh, so yeah, an interesting grape. And this is sort of a medium bodied red. Let's give it a swirl and a sniff. Yeah, so getting a little bit more of uh, is it sweeter? It smells a little yeah. sweeter. So what we're getting there, riper fruit, mm -hmm. right? So a warmer climate stands to reason that the grapes on the vine would be, you know, a bit thicker skinned. They'd be able to withstand a lot of heat and sunshine. So with those thicker skinned grapes, you're going to get more intensity of color, uh, just bigger bodied reds. So we're getting riper fruit, and that's kind of what we're smelling when we think it's going to be sweet. So we're kind of moving away from those fresh kind of crisp crunchy notes of red fruit. I smell and banana, is that crazy? Well, I think it's more like a like a compote. It's okay. almost like a, a st not a stewed fruit, but maybe a jammy fruit. Right, that a we're jammy fruit. Here. Yeah, I've heard that term with wine, a jammy wine. Yeah, and it's uh, it's not a bad thing. It's just a different style. It's, you know, what you like. Let's give it a sip and see what we get. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, I feel it a lot more on the tongue this mm. time than like in the cheeks. Right, so again, coming for more concentration of fruit. Someone, they go into their local wine store, they want to sure. try like a, a medium wine like this, but they don't have a baga. Is there something else that they could maybe ask for that's in that yeah, same kind of style? Yeah, I think what, uh, Portugal offers great value and a, a lot of these kind of rustic reds, if you're not into like a super polished package, um, something like a Toriga. Okay. Is a, is a great option. Okay, so we've had a lighter red and a medium, medium red. I'm going to go ahead and make a guess that we're having a bolder red for our we last We sure one. are. Yeah. And this Syrah from Chile is a little bit more what I call polished, rounder, softer. Um, 
We'll see. I don't want to guide you too much. Well, I can definitely tell you what I'm smelling is something other than fruit with this one, more mm. of a mustier smell. Right, so this would have seen a lot of like oak aging. This would be more of a, a crowd pleaser. Let's give it a sip. Great. Yeah, that's a wine that definitely lets you know it's in your mouth. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of flavor to it. Yeah, so lots of power. Lots of you know, kind of heat from the alcohol, natural spice from the grape. Yeah, I feel a little bit of a burn on the top of my chest. A little even. bit. Yeah, so it's really like letting you know it's there, as you mm -hmm. said. Um, and the fruit is round and soft and a little bit sweet. Like it's really, it's what I would call quite ripe. And uh, but still, you're getting nice acidity. It's still balanced. It's not all ripe, sweet fruit like a candy bar. Right. And probably something you can take with you if you don't know what's for dinner that night. Yes. Yeah. Yeah or who's gonna be there. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, um, yeah, thank you so much, Heather. I feel like I've learned more about reds. I always thought I was a fan of reds, but I didn't really realize kind of the, the spectrum from mm -hmm. light to bold. Um, so thank you so much. You're very welcome. I now have a whole new appreciation for the finer points in red wine tasting. Well, maybe you can share them with your next dinner date. I don't drink a lot of wine, but I did enjoy listening to them talk. Amazing that you can find all of that in one glass. Or two. Or a bottle. <laughs> in the coming weeks, Laura will be instructing us about wine and food pairings, and I hear it involves chocolate. So maybe hold off on that dinner date.